we're gonna make three killer custom transitions that are smooth and professional. By the end of this video, you'll know how to make your own presets or just copy these ones. Let's get into it. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve and I've got two clips here that I need to join together smoothly. So we're gonna make a whip pan transition to do that. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab an adjustment clip and drop it on my footage. So this adjustment clip is actually gonna be our transition clip and it's a little bit long. So I'm gonna right click change clip duration, and I'm gonna make it 10 frames. Then I'm actually gonna go ahead and center it so that it's in the middle of my two clips here. A 10 frame transition is gonna work well for my 24 FPS timeline here. If you're on a 60 FPS timeline, you might need to make it a little bit longer, but you can always adjust it later. I'll show you how to do that. Now to start building our transition, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna press open in Fusion page. It might look a little bit complicated if you're not familiar, but it's super simple. I'm just gonna press shift and space here, and then I'm gonna type transform, and I'm I'm gonna add this transform node. This transform node will allow us to alter the image. So make sure that your playhead is at frame zero here on your mini timeline. And we're gonna make four keyframes, starting with one at frame zero, uh, just up here at center, hit this button. Next, we're going to find where our cut happens in our clip. So on my 10 frame transition, it's on frame five. Here's where it changes. So I'm gonna set a keyframe at frame four. I'm gonna set a keyframe at frame five. And then I'm gonna set a keyframe at frame nine. Now that we have our keyframe set, we're only actually gonna adjust the ones in the middle, starting with frame four. At frame four, we're gonna set our center value to one. And as you can see, this pushes our first clip out of frame. Then go one frame over to frame five, and we're gonna set the center value to zero. And what that does is it gives the effect of pushing our other clip in the frame. But as you can see, we do have some empty space here and we can go ahead and fill that by changing our edges to mirror. And that's all we really need to do for our keyframing. As you can see at the moment, we have this nice slide. We still need to clean it up a little bit. So we're gonna open spline up here in the top right, make sure that our transform is selected and you can hit the zoom to fit icon here. Spline gives us a graphical representation of our keyframes. And if we hit control and A at the same time, that actually selects all of our points and then we can press s and that will smooth out the curves and to make it just a little bit more seamless we can actually come down here to our spline and adjust these lines like this and i almost forgot to add motion blur it makes just about every animation look a little bit smoother you can toggle it on by clicking settings up here and checking the motion blur box you can turn up the quality of the motion blur and play around with some of these other settings shutter angle will kind of just increase the motion blur and now we have a smooth whip pan transition next we're going to do this super clean zoom flash starting the same way i'm gonna grab an adjustment clip and change the clip duration to 10 frames. Right click it to open it in the fusion page and press shift and space to add a soft glow node. You can mess with the threshold here to kind of see what works best for your clips. I'm gonna leave it as is. Now go to frame zero, set your gain to zero and set a keyframe. Then go to frame five and set your glow to about three. And now go to the last frame, frame nine or 10 and set your glow to zero. And now we're gonna add a transform node to give it the zoom effect by pressing shift and space and then enter when transform comes up. And and we can set a default size keyframe at frame zero, then go to frame five and increase the size to 1.5. Then go to frame six and set a keyframe at 1.5 and then go to frame 10 and set our size back to one. That's gonna be all of our notes. Now open up the spline editor, press control A to select all of our points and then press S to smooth the curves. Playing around with these lines can change the velocity of the movement. I like to hold alt and make the outer ones a little bit longer and the inner ones a little bit shorter. I recommend turning on motion blur and increasing the settings. And if you want to change the length of the whole transition, just hit this time stretch icon here, select all of your points, and drag this line to make it longer or shorter. This last transition is definitely essential. We're going to be making a smooth zoom. So I got my 10 frame adjustment clip between my videos, and I'm going to open it in the fusion page. I'm going to press shift and space to add a transform node. Go to frame zero and set a size keyframe at one. Then go to the last frame of your first clip and set your size to 2.25 so we get a nice zoom in. Then go one frame over to the first frame of your last clip and set your size to 0.25. We have some blank space here, so I'll set my edges to mirror and then go to the last frame of your animation and set your size back to one. Add motion blur by hitting the settings in the top right. Check the box and increase your quality and shutter angle to your liking. Now we have this zoom, but to make it even smoother, let's open up the spline editor, select all of our points and hit F to flatten the curves. Drag these inner lines down and in while holding shift and then drag the outer lines while holding alt. And now we have three drag and drop transitions that we can customize and use in any of our edits. Hope you found this helpful and have a great rest of your day.